our ability to hear and what we listen to and what we're hearing and what our brain is paying attention to or what our brain will allow us to pay attention to is a very underappreciated aspect of upright stability and posture and neck movement and head movement. And as a result, it can be part of bodily pain that you may feel, whether it's in your neck, your back, or any other part of your body. As you can see here, there's a lot of neck muscles and I have vagus labeled. So this whole video is about the vagus nerve, but not just the vagus itself, but everything that leads into the vagus. Uh, and one of those is your ability to hear or the hearing system. But the hearing system is not just one thing. It's a lot of different nerves, all part of this ventral vagal system, which we use to communicate with the world. So this individual that you're going to see, he came to me with back pain and he might have neck pain also, but definitely the back pain. And because I ask these questions and I know what's going on with the brain is way more important than what's going on in the physical body itself. He told me that when he was younger, he had speech issues and he actually, when he, he speaks three different languages, English, Spanish, and French, cause he's from Colombia. And when he was younger, he had speech therapy to help with uh, tongue placement and how to pr pronounce certain uh, sounds. So we investigated that a little bit further because I was interested, it piqued my interest, let's put it that way, because I have my own issues, which I'll get to at some point in future videos. So what we did was I asked him, what, was there a particular um, sound or, or word that he struggled with? And he said, profesor. So he would say in Spanish, and this is what happens when he says profesor in Spanish. He has limited shoulder interrotation, but now when he plugs his left ear, so he's only listening with right, his right ear, he has full interrotation. So you can think of that shoulder interrotation test as, is it your ability to get air into the right side of your rib cage? Yeah, but in this, in, it's a classic postural restoration test, but and does it also indicate someone who's stuck over on the right side? Yes, of course, because of that underlying asymmetry and the bigger right diaphragm and everything I talk about in all the videos of this channel. But think of it in this, in this scenario, just think of it as an extension of the neck. Whenever he says professor, but not professor, that's the interesting thing. If he says it in English, because there's a sound differential, professor in my best Spanish accent, and professor, P-R-O compared to P-R-A, he's fine. He'll, he'll still have internal rotation if he says professor, but if he says professor, he's, he struggles. But if he plugs his left ear, not only does he get full internal rotation, but his, his inability to say the word kind of goes away. So it was, it was classified as a stutter, but when he closes his left ear and says it, it comes out much more fluently and you really wouldn't notice any type of stutter when he does it. So what I had been explaining to him is any time that your brain has to make extra effort for something that should come very naturally, anytime you have to put thought into something that you really shouldn't have to think about, your, your tension levels will increase. So because he struggles to say that word and probably some other words that are probably very similar, and we did come up with a couple other words that were borderline difficult for him, um, tension levels would go up. So whenever he's losing internal rotation, that's because his intent, his, his, the, the tension level is going up because he's struggling to do something that should be very natural. But that, what that's also gonna be doing is tightening up his neck. So again, I can't show neck tests because it's just hard, it's too hard to show on, in a video, but the, just think of the right shoulder as a neck test for in this context. So anytime he says that word, but it's not only when he says it, if I say it, that's what's so fascinating. And I already knew this because I have experimented with myself. If I say professor, he'll lose internal rotation. But if I say professor, he's completely fine because he's, I got him neutral previously. So he's, he was neutral, but that word tightens him up. Is there a reason for that? There is. So here's your vocal system. You'll see at the bottom, I've labeled the pelvic diaphragm. And then in the middle, you see the diaphragms. Remember that's plural too. You have a left and a right, and the right is much bigger than the left. So we're, it's an asymmetric design. You have the right lung and the left lung. The right lung is also bigger than the left lung. The right lung has three chambers, the left lung has two. And then you have these vagus nerves. It's the recurrent laryngeal nerve part of the vagus nerves. And then you have the voice box or the larynx. 
All of that together is what produces speech. We don't have a speech apparatus. There is nothing unique to humans that allows us to speak. Speech is brain function. It's not that. That allow those things, the pelvic diaphragm, the diaphragm, the lungs, they allow us to pump air and vibrate air so things come out as sound as they pass through our throat and mouth cavity and as our tongue and our lips and our mouth forms different sounds. But there's nothing inherently inside any of us that's not inside other mammals and animals. We don't have anything they don't have. So all of this physiological um, muscles and mechanisms are found elsewhere in the animal kingdom. It's not unique to humans. So speech is a brain function more than anything else. The brain has to coordinate all of this air manipulation with language to produce the sounds that we're, we're talking about. Now, it's not only the pelvic floor, the diaphragms, and the vocal cords that produce speech. It's also the nerves itself. So what's really important is this the, these vagus nerves, because remember, you have a right vagus nerve and a left vagus nerve. And as you can see, they're actually, they are not symmetrical either. And more importantly, when it comes to the left ear and the right ear, and this probably explains why plugging the left ear allowed his tension levels to drop and for him to speak more fluently. Look at this thing called the recurrent laryngeal nerve. They come off the main branch of the vagus and they, they come off the vagus and then they loop up and they attach to the larynx. So they're actually the motor innervation. They actually control your voice box, your vocal folds. Uh, the one on the, the recurrent laryngeal nerve on the right is shorter than the one on the left. So we hear ourselves with our right ear or with our right voice faster than we do with the left side. And that's one of the points of this book uh, Alfred Tomatis, or Tomatis, he was a French ENT doctor, and not many people are aware of his work, but he made the point that the right ear has to be the ear for language. It has to be the leading ear. If the left ear, because of that delay, because it's slower, and so you're hearing, if you hear your voice with your left ear, you hear it more slowly than the right ear, and also because the left ear, it gets a little complicated, the left ear has to send the information to the right hemisphere of the brain first and then pass back over to the left side, whereas the right ear goes directly to the left side, to the speech centers on the left side, because the, the speech centers of the brain are on the left side. So for a variety of reasons, the right ear is faster than the left ear. If someone's listening, if, they're, if their dominant ear is the left ear, that might be why uh, some stuttering occurs. That might be why some audi auditory processing issues occur because they're using the slower ear to respond to their own voice. So perhaps they're thinking faster than they can get feedback of their own voice. So singers, and why I have these, singers, these are for singers. They can put them on and you can direct the sound more into one ear or the other. So here I can hear my right ear faster or louder and if I do it on the left side, I can now hear the left side faster. What's interesting, and I'll make a video of this, if I do it with the right side and I speak or sing, I can touch my toes no problem. But if I do it for the left ear, just like in this video, if I do it left ear, I can't touch my toes. So when I force my voice into my left ear, the slower ear, I get tense also. So I'm pretty sure this happens with a lot of people. Now. Most people are right ear dominant and probably don't have an issue, but if you are left ear dominant and your left ear is actually doing the listening, you might get neck tension, you might get back tension, uh, and that can, well, affect, so you think you have a back problem, or maybe you're, a peer, maybe you're doing PRI already, you're doing posture restoration already, and, and you're stuck, and like for some reason there's some tension you can't get rid of. Well, there's all these little things that no one's paying attention to, like hearing, that can influence your postural muscles. And because of that tension, if you don't realize that there's these little things that no one thinks about, but hearing's not really a little thing, uh, you might be just doing exercise and technique after technique and stretch after stretch and nothing really changes because the tension is being driven not by the muscles, but by 
brain function and what you're hearing. Now again, vision is a big part and the oral cavity is a big part, your teeth, your jaw movement, all of that is huge for neck relaxation. Any of those things and your jaw and your teeth, well your jaw is directly tied into what you're hearing, which I'll get into. Anything that creates neck, the neck that can't move and rotate and side bend properly will create tension elsewhere in the body. 